In this video, we're going to take a look at some of the more complex areas of modeling a guitar in Fusion 360. Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design, and in this video, we're going to tackle something that is not car parts, but we are going to talk about using surfacing tools and form tools to make complex designs. So I had a request come in or a question about modeling some features of this guitar. Now, uh, if you're into guitars or you know what this is, this is a Chris Broderick custom guitar. Now I say custom, it's a pro series, something you can buy off the shelf. But this electric guitar has some features that are somewhat unique that you don't typically see on other guitars. So what we're gonna talk about specifically is going to be some of the transitions that are happening from the neck of the guitar into the body. Now, these are gonna be kind of difficult for us to, to model. And we've got some details on the top that we're gonna talk about as well. Now, we're not gonna completely model this guitar, but what we are gonna do is we're gonna talk about some of the things that I would look for when creating a design like this, some of the areas that I would use forms, some of the areas that I wouldn't use forms, and why we wanna choose those options. Because one of the things whenever you're modeling something is you always need to think about the options that you have and why you're making those choices. So we're gonna get started in Fusion 360. And the first thing that I suggest that you do is you just go to your web browser and you just do a search for uh, Jackson Guitars. And this is the Chris Broderick Pro Series. And you'll get tons of images. Find one that is a uh, forward facing or rear facing image that you can use as a canvas. Now in Fusion 360, again, we're not gonna model the entire guitar. I just wanna focus on a few areas that should give you enough that you can model pretty much anything. So we're gonna get started. For me, I'm gonna use the inch unit system. You don't have to, uh, but for me, this is what's gonna work for me. And then I'm gonna insert a canvas. I'm gonna look for the location of the images that I've downloaded. You can see that I have a bunch of uh, different ones here. I've got a back and a front. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna insert this as a canvas. We're gonna pick one of the planes and I'm just gonna say, okay. Then I wanna go to my canvas folder, right click, and I'm gonna calibrate it. Now, if you have a specific dimension on an image, then you can get pretty close. What I'm gonna do is go across the neck of the guitar and I'm gonna make that two and a quarter inches. And that should be pretty close to get the image to scale. Keep in mind that when you're using an image, you're not gonna get an exact scale because you are just picking pixels essentially. So you wanna get it close. And in this case, it doesn't matter because we're not making this. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna try to, you know, worry about the shapes. The other thing that I wanna do is I'm gonna put a canvas image for the back. Now this isn't necessarily something I need to do, but I want to, to go ahead and just put this canvas image on the back. So that way I have, you know, sort of a good idea as to what's going on. I am gonna flip it horizontally so that it does match. And I could, again, I could use the edit or calibrate and you'll notice that it doesn't perfectly line up. So we're not gonna really be able to use it for reference. And what we can do is we can just pull it off to the side and maybe increase that opacity. Because this one is black, it's not gonna work out very well. Um, but sometimes you can just add additional reference images. Because it is so dark and it is on a black background, I'm gonna hit cancel and not insert it. But just keep in mind, that if you do find some good images of the front and the back of the guitar, then you will be able to go ahead and place those in and use them as references. Now that we have this kind of set up, the first thing that I want to do is I want to create the outside profile of this. Now, this can be very tricky because essentially what we're going to end up doing is we're going to be using a spline. Now, we've talked about splines before on this channel. And to get started, we're going to create a sketch. And when we look at the splines that we have under the Create menu, there are two different types. We've got Fit Point Spline and a Control Point Spline. Now, the Control Point Spline generally will be easier for us to get nice, clean curvature but the fit point spline is gonna be easier for us to essentially trace around the guitar. So we're gonna use the fit point spline in this example, and I'm gonna give you some tips on ways that you can make sure that your curvature is nice and smooth. So we're gonna start over here where we've got this nice broad curve. And generally what you wanna think about is having points before and after your inflection points. And what I mean by inflection points is these are gonna be areas where you're changing the direction of curvature or you've got the maximum amount of radius of curvature. So again, I'm gonna start over here and I'm just gonna put one in the middle and I'm gonna just kind of work my way around. 
And you'll notice that if you click, sometimes it's going to accept that spline. We can do this in multiple splines, but it's going to be good for us to practice by doing this in a single spline. So I'm going to hit escape, select that and hit delete, and then I'm going to start again. So again, we're just going to pick a couple points and I'm going to work my way around. And remember that we can move these points around after the fact, but we just want to get relatively close, get close to that, that uh, change in curvature. As we get closer to these tight transitions, it's going to be trickier. So we're going to have to come back and make some adjustments there. So we've got that shape there and I'm going to click to say OK. And when we take a look at this, um, as we take a look at the shape here, this is a little tricky because if we look at the back of the guitar, and I'll bring an image over here, the back of the guitar is sort of smooth like this, whereas the front of the guitar is blending in to the neck. So we have to think about what that curvature is really doing, what it really means. So if you're going to model this from the front, then you have to be sort of mindful of that shape. If you're going to model the back of it, and sometimes it's good to have that back reference image. Now what's actually happening here is these are going to come down and they're going to come back and back over. So in order to kind of stick with that and make sure that I have, you know, a, a sort of a good reference, I'm going to delete this now that we've played around with it a little bit. I am going to insert another canvas. I am going to use this white guitar. I'm going to use the same plane. I'm going to just scale it up in here. And I'm going to rotate it and I am going to flip it horizontally. So we're going to rotate it until it's in about the right position. We're going to scale it up. It doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, we just want to kind of get it close. So you can see that these are going five degrees every time. Probably going to need something like one or two degrees. And we are kind of relying on a picture. Now, the picture is not going to give us the perfect scale. But again, we're only doing this to, to sort of have these references. So um, that's going to give us a little bit better idea of that shape because we can now see on the back side how we've got that smooth transition. So let's try the spline one more time. Again, it's always good to practice. So let's go ahead and let's just work our way through here. Again, sort of picking these points and working around. I'm not going to worry about this sort of cutout on the back side. That's something that you can do after the fact if you want. We really want to get the, the major shape of this. I'm going to kind of work my way around. And as we get back to this point, when we click on it, it's going to automatically apply tangency. And we can hit Escape to get off our spline tool. Now, the first thing that we want to do here is we want to select it and turn on our curvature combs. I'm going to increase the density. And what we should see is nice, smooth curvature combs. You can see that uh, as we change direction here, I've got them relatively smooth. I can increase the scale if it helps. And the area that we really want to fix, the one area that's really bad on this, at least for me, is this one right here. That's something that I do want to fix. So I'm going to leave the curvature combs on, and I'm going to pull this point out. And you can see how the curvature comb has changed, but there's this little dip in it right here. When we look at the one on the right hand side, it doesn't look like that. It's pretty much straight here, wraps around. This one over here has got that bump and I want to fix that. So I'm going to move these, these points around until I smooth that out. So this is something that you want to look for when you're using this type of spline. And again, the, the fit point spline is going to be a bit harder to get smooth curvature. If you're going to use the other type of spline, which is the control point, then what you're doing is you're creating the cage on the outside, which is a perfectly valid way to do this. And it's going to give you a nice smooth result. But note that when we go back and we, you know, we actually close this off, we are going to have to add a tangency, a curvature continuous relationship, or a collinear relationship between these edges. Uh, again, we're not going to be using this, so I'm not too concerned about it. But that is something that you're going to, going to want to control because we've got a sharp intersection there. So I'm going to select that and delete that, and I'm going to focus on this. Once I'm happy with the curvature, I'm going to select it and turn the curvature comes off because honestly, they can get kind of annoying anytime we view the sketch. So now that we can finish the sketch, the next thing for us to do is to turn this into a body. Now we can just extrude this up, but obviously the guitar is going to have some sort of shape to the top and likely the bottom. The bottom is going to be mostly flat, but the top will have some shape to it. 
So remember when we're looking at this, the top is, is going to be in this orientation. You can see this matches our uh, picture pretty well. So what we're going to do is we're going to extrude this up as a surface. So one of the reasons I want to use this as a surface is because it's going to help me when we start to use forms to create the outside shape. So we need to decide how big the guitar is going to be. Um, in this case, what I'm going to do is just go two inches. It's going to be thicker than it actually needs to be, but that's going to give me a good reference point. And then I'm going to use patch, and I'm going to patch the back side of this. And because we extruded it and we drew this on a plane, the back side is going to be a planar face automatically. I'm going to stitch those two together. This is going to create one surface. It's still open on the top. And now this gives us the control to create the outside surface. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, we've covered this with forms. We can use extrude and forms, and we could have just made this with a form body. The problem that happens when we use forms is if we use extrude on a form, the tolerance that you end up getting, you can see here with a, a very small number of faces, it's not even close to being the right shape. If we increase this, Let's go up to 40. Um, as soon as we increase that, we're going to get closer to the shape, but it's still not quite right. Now, ideally, we want a uniform distribution, but that's going to get even worse. So you're going to have to use curvature distribution, which means it's going to bunch up edges in these corners. And ultimately, you're not going to get the quite the same shape that you do when you're talking about just extruding a surface. So for something like that, we really want to focus our attention on using an extruded surface because we're going to get closer to that spline. But for the outside face that has some curvature to it, we can use a form. So I'm going to use the plane option, and I'm just going to draw a, a big rectangle that's larger than this. Uh, you can see that I picked the wrong plane. That's okay. I can rotate it. So we're going to go to modify, select the entire body, and we want to rotate this thing just 90 degrees. All right. So once we have the entire thing rotated, I'll go back to my all options. And now I want to start to make the curvature, make the shape of the, the outside face of the guitar. However, it's probably easier for us to add edges while it's completely flat and then begin to manipulate it. So when we're looking at the shape of this guitar, what we want to do is we want to think about where the light is. You can kind of see that we've got a lighter section here and a lighter section here. And I want edges there so that I can control the curvature. Essentially what we're going to be doing is using this top face to ultimately build an entire solid body. So obviously we don't have the edges where we need them. So what we're going to do is we're going to start adding them. So first I'm going to go to insert edge. I'm going to double click this middle edge. And what I want to do is I want to put one right here. And the reason I want to put one right here is because this is where we're changing direction. So as I create new edges and new divisions, that is going to be an inflection point for me. So I'm going to say OK for that one. You'll notice that it moves it up. Uh, we want to take a look at this in box display. So we're going to go to display mode, box display, which is alt and one on the keyboard. And you'll notice in box display, it puts that edge exactly where we want it. We're going to take care of making sure that in smooth display, it's in the right place. But for right now, I'm going to go to modify, insert point. And what I want to do is I want to select a point on this upper edge. I'm going to come down to here and try to sort of mimic that shape. And then I'm going to come over here. And then I'm going to come down to this bottom edge and say, OK. So again, what we're doing is we're going to break this up so that we can start to control the curvature. We're going to use a right click menu and repeat insert point. I'm going to come up here and I'm going to try to start getting that curvature. You'll notice we really want a point to, to sort of turn here. So we're going to have to add another division. And the way we're going to do that again is by double clicking on the bottom edge and we'll use insert edge. Now, at this point, it's important to note that we're using the simple insertion mode. The plane that we're working on is completely flat. We haven't adjusted any curvature yet. So exact or simple will actually give us the same result in this case. Uh, in most cases, you want to be mindful of simple versus exact. But again, in this case, it's not too bad. We're going to insert another point. This time, we're going to change its direction here. Hit Enter. And then we want to select this other edge that we don't want. Sometimes this can be difficult depending on 
the angle you're viewing this at, and you might want to zoom in, select it, and hit delete. Okay, so now we've got the edges divided up where we want. This thing is still completely flat. I'm going to hide the image for right now, and I want to go back and forth between smooth and box display just so we can see this. So Alt and 3 on the keyboard, you can kind of see how those edges change. And what I want to do in smooth display is go to utilities and make uniform. And then I want to make note of where those edges are. So Alt and 1, then back to Alt and 3. And they've pulled a little bit closer to uniform relative to the box display. And we haven't changed any curvature yet. So now's the time where we want to begin to change the curvature. I'm going to go to modify edit form. And I'm going to use the body option. And I want to pull this entire body down just a little bit. So I'm going to pull it down 0.1, so it's just inside of that surface. You can pull it down as much as you want, keeping in mind how thick you want the guitar body to be. This is still probably a bit too thick because I, I made it two inches originally. So I'm going to go down half an inch, actually, as I'm looking at this. And that's a good starting point. So then we're going to go to the All option, which allows us to grab faces, edges, or vertices, and start to add curvature. Now, if you remember, if we bring that image back, it begins to sort of roll down on the sides here, and it rolls down on the sides over here as well. So the first thing that we can do is we can double click this edge and just pull it down. We can do the same thing over here, double click this edge and just pull it down. Now it's not perfect because it's just a very sort of gradual transition. I'm gonna double click this edge and pull that down just a little bit. You might wanna zoom in just so it's not pulling it down too drastically and go back and forth between box and smooth display. So just to kind of take a look. So that looks pretty good so far. You know, it's a very gradual transition. And if we want to have a harder transition, then we need to add additional edges because essentially what we're doing here is we're controlling the curvature going into and out of these edges. There's another display mode that allows us to see the, uh, basically see the curvature the surface here is the smooth display, and this on the outside is the box display. So this gives us sort of some good insight into what this looks like and if we want to make any changes. So for example, that vertex right there, I'm going to use Modify Edit Form, and I'm going to manually pull it down a bit. And I'm going to do the same thing over here, pull that down a little bit, just to kind of change the shape. And maybe even take the center one and pull it down just a little bit. All right, so that looks pretty good. Next, I want to insert some additional edges. So back to my box display, just take a look at the overall shape, see if I want to make any adjustments. This is all flat, which is not generally a good idea. Whenever you're working in forms, you want to make sure that you don't just have flat space here. Uh, so this means I'm going to take this vertex down a little bit, and then I'm going to double click on this edge and take this entire edge down just a little bit. And I'm gonna take this edge down just a little bit as well. And what I'm looking to do is to make sure that I don't just have a straight transition here. And if I want to, I can take this front edge down just a hair, and just that little bit will help make sure that we've got nice smooth curvature. All right, so that's a lot of little adjustments. Now let's take care of tightening up that crease. So in order to do that, we're gonna double click on this edge insert an edge, but this time we're going to put it relatively close. We don't want to have it right on top of it because then it's going to give us a very hard crease, but we want it somewhere, uh, you know, about there visually. I'm going to use control and four on the keyboard to hide the edges, and we can start to see that transition. Now, if that's too close, then we can double click on it, use modify and slide edge, and we can pull it away a little bit and watch it soften that up. I'm going to use Control and 6 on the keyboard to bring it back. You can also use your display settings, visual style shaded and shaded with visible edges. Those are the two that I'm bouncing back and forth between. So that way I can kind of see this without the edges obscuring it. So Control and 6 will bring them back. And we're going to do the same thing on the other side. So insert an edge. And again, we want to kind of um, plan where that is. And remember that we don't want anything that's perfectly flat. So we are going to use edit form and bring that down just a little bit. And we're going to do the same thing over here. Um, essentially, when we have a flat section between two edges, it's going to not give us the appropriate curvature. It's going to try to um, essentially control the surface 
And what's going to end up happening if you've got a flat section here is the curvature itself is going to have a lot of tension. The surface is going to have tension. So um, you, you just end up with some bad results and you kind of want to avoid that if, if at all possible. So back to a smooth display, control and four to hide the edges. And now we're starting to get something that looks, uh, looks pretty good. Now we could spend a lot of time messing around with this. I don't really want to get uh, too deep into to sort of playing around with this, but I do want to talk about ways in which we can make some adjustments. So first I'm going to go to insert point. I'm going to go from here and I want to bring this over just a bit so that it crosses that, uh, that portion of the body. I'm going to hit enter and then delete this edge. I'm going to go to my smooth display, control and four. And now what we've, we've done is we've just sort of softened that up in this area and we've transitioned it or moved where it is on the guitar. Um, so again, that's kind of the idea. Control and six to bring those back, alt and one box display. And what I'm gonna do is do this one more time. This time I'm gonna take this one, I'm gonna come over to the left a little bit and go back to my smooth display and just take a look. So you can see now that crease is a bit tighter down here and it blends away, making this just sort of a larger face here and it blends you know, kind of into that side. So that's a, that's a pretty good result so far. I'm pretty happy with that. We can obviously add a lot more detail, but if we take a look at the picture again, let's go ahead and bring it back. Um, it pretty much captures what we want. It's not perfect because we could toss another edge in here and we can control that curvature if we want, but you could, you could end up spending a ton of time. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna double click on this edge. I'm gonna go to insert edge. I'm gonna use the exact insertion method. I'm gonna do minus 0.5, so it puts it up here. I'm gonna say, okay. And when we use exact, when we're inserting those edges, what that's actually doing is it's making adjustments to ensure that the shape of the surface, the, the form body that we have here, it, that it's staying exactly the same. If we were to use the simple insertion mode, it's going to make changes to the shape and put that edge exactly where we want it. And sometimes you wanna keep the shape the same, sometimes you wanna allow it to, uh, to actually change. So the reason I added that one is because we've got this transition here. And I think what I wanna do is go to insert point. I'm gonna come from here. I'm gonna come up and then back over to this point. I'm gonna double click this edge and then hit delete. So back to smooth display, control and four and just take a look at the surface. So essentially we just added a little bit of an extra corner there. Last thing I wanna do here is I wanna to go to make uniform on this. And again, you're not gonna see anything until we go to box display and back to smooth display. But essentially what we're doing is we're taking the, the, the spacing of these faces in smooth display and we're just getting them a little bit closer to how we have it in box display, trying to make everything a bit more uniform. Uniform, four-sided, that is, is going to be the goal. Nice and smooth transitions. We don't wanna, uh, you don't wanna upset the curvature too bad. So now we've got something that has some shape to it. I'm gonna finish the form, which is gonna convert it to a surface. And now we're gonna use a tool called boundary fill. You could also trim and stitch things together to turn it into a solid, but boundary fill will allow us to select surfaces, solids, and planes. And then we can simply pick the cells that we wanna keep and it'll turn that into a solid body for us. This is also nice because it allows us to keep those surfaces and we've got our solid body here. So uh, you can see that we're left with a solid body for the guitar. I can go back to my solid tools and start to work on it. First thing I wanna do is save this. So I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that I save this so I don't lose anything. I'm just gonna call this CB guitar for uh, Chris Broderick. And now we've got our file to keep working on. All right, so the next thing for me is going to be to make the neck. Now, a lot of these guitars are actually going to have a neck that uh, is bolted on or removable. I don't have this guitar, so I don't exactly know. But from the pictures, it looks like the neck and the body are one piece. Now, I, I've found a couple pictures, and let me go ahead and uh, try to pull one up so we can take a look. So uh, this picture here, if we zoom in, 
The way in which the body blends up into the neck and is smooth here, to me that looks like it's all one piece, the way that it transitions in. It doesn't look like it actually bolts on. Uh, so that's something that we need to keep in mind as we're designing this. So what I'm gonna do is I want to create that. So we're gonna start by just uh, sketching here. Now uh, the guitar is upside down, so I'm gonna flip it over. Uh, because that curvature part there, that is the top. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start with a line, just a horizontal line. Now, remember when we scaled our image, I made that two and a quarter. So that's going to be the width of it. And then I'm going to go to a front view or a top view. And I just want to position that left to right so that it's in approximately the right position for the neck. So once I have that in approximately the right position, I can come back to this view. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my line tool. I'm going to find the midpoint, which is that triangle reference. And I'm just going to draw a vertical line, turn it into construction. And the reason I want to do this is because I want to dimension the distance between my origin and where that is. I'm just going to say 0.1. So that way I know that this line can't float left and right. It can only float up and down. I also don't need that line to be there. It can be construction because what we're gonna do is we're gonna create the rest of the neck. Now, I'm not gonna get real deep into creating a bunch of crazy profiles or anything like that, because there's a lot of different shapes that we can get around and, and do here. But what I wanna do is I wanna think about where this is going to hit the rest of the guitar, because that is going to be important. So we're gonna use our line tool, and I'm gonna make a vertical line here. I'm gonna make a vertical line here. And then I'm going to create an arc on top. I'll go from this point to this point and right click and say, okay. So now we wanna use some constraints. I'm gonna make these two vertical lines equal. That's automatically gonna make sure that their endpoints are horizontal. So all I need to do is dimension their height and the arc or the radius of that. So we're gonna pick a height that works. In this case, I'm gonna say uh, eighth inch. You can see that puts that straight just above our top of our guitar. Then I'm going to hit escape and I'm going to start to pull this down and just get something that looks about right. And then D to dimension this. Looks like about 12 inches will work. And then we're going to just bring this up and find that, that position that we want it in. And then we can dimension the horizontal line from the origin. Looks like about 0.6. The last thing for me to do is to, to create a spline. I'm going to use a fit point spline here. In general, I probably would not use a fit point spline for something like this, but I want to add a tangency between this and the vertical line. When you do this, make sure that you select the spline. If you grab the green handle, that's fine, but you wanna make sure you use something like horizontal vertical or collinear. We also wanna make sure that the spline handles on these vertical sections are equal. And I also wanna make sure that this one here is horizontal because I want this to be a symmetric shape and then I'm going to use a construction line. I'm going to find the midpoint here, and I'm going to attach it to that. Another thing we could do is we could use coincident between this vertical reference line and this point, and it's going to shift it over for us. So those constraints, a lot of times you can just sort of pick and choose what you want for the constraint. That's going to give us enough flexibility. This cannot move left and right. It can only move up and down. And if we want to, we can come in and we can dimension the uh, the handles, we can increase or decrease them however we want to adjust the shape. Same thing down here. We can sort of move those around. But the only thing that we can do right now is move this up and down and adjust the weight or the influence of those handles. Because it's not really important to me here, all I'm going to do is dimension the distance here at 0.9. I'm going to give these a width value just so that I can say that it's fully defined. And we'll do the same thing over here make that 0.5, and now you can see the spline is, is fully defined. So we're going to finish the sketch. I'm going to hide the canvas image, and we're going to extrude this. So E on the keyboard. Um, as I pull this out, you can see it's trying to cut away. Now, generally what I would do if I were uh, creating this, you know, how most electric guitars are, I would actually come in and make this a separate body, but because I know they're joined together, I'm just gonna use the join option. However, I do wanna make sure that it starts just in front of those pickups, so I am gonna use an offset option on the profile plane, 
And I'm going to try to do two inches. And it looks like maybe two and a half or three inches is going to get me a little bit closer. So if we view this here, you can see we're pretty close, maybe 3.125, 3.25. I could have also just made a plane there. But again, this is this is going to be okay for what we're doing. You'll notice that in the image, um, the guitar shape is a little bit different. So I do need to make an adjustment to that. I want to make sure that this is completely inside the body. So I'm going to just make some adjustments based on where that falls on this design to make sure it's completely inside. So that looks okay. We can adjust the location of the sketch. We can raise or lower that however we want. But at this point, that looks pretty good. So I'm going to do a quick save. And now is the time for us to talk about the transition because that's going to be the hard part. Now I'm going to start by doing the transition on the bottom. And then we can move on to those cuts that happen on the top. So on the bottom of this guitar, let's go ahead and bring this image back. This doesn't really tell the whole story from this view. The other view of the backside kind of shows where those sections blend in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a sketch. You can pick any planar face or a sketch plane. And then I'm just going to use my line tool. And I want to figure out where that intersects. I'm going to come through there with a line. I am going to go through the neck of the guitar wherever this comes, uh, comes through and then down through this portion of the body and say OK. Now you notice I didn't dimension anything. Uh, that's OK because we're just doing stuff visually right now. I'm going to split face. And what I want to do is I want to split this face right here. And I'm also going to go ahead and split the neck of the guitar. And I'm going to use that sketch we just created. Allow it to extend and say OK. Let's go ahead and hide the canvas image. And what we did here is we essentially, we just split the faces up. It's still one solid body. We didn't break it into multiple pieces. We just split the face up. The next thing for me to do is to actually split this face up a little bit better. And the main reason I want to do that is because we're going to create a loft. And when we loft from here down to this face, we have a nice smooth profile here and a sharp corner. And that's going to cause problems in our geometry. So what we want to do is we want to break this face up to something that more matches this shape. So in order to do that, we're going to create a new sketch. This can be done on the end of the neck, or we can just pick a plane. It doesn't really matter as long as it's looking at this, uh, this face here. Then we're going to use Create, Project, Include, Project. And I'm going to bring this edge, this edge, and this bottom edge in because I want to use those as tangency references. So I'm going to use a spline. I'm going to come from the top. I'm going to come down to this edge and back over here. Then I'm going to hit Escape to get off my spline tool and just sort of begin to manipulate these handles. But essentially what we're doing is we're making them tangent with these. These are vertical lines based on how we split the face up. It projected our sketch. So we could use vertical, horizontal for these handles. We can make this one horizontal because we know the bottom is flat. And this just gives us, again, a face or a section where we can transition to. So now, once again, we're going to use split face. The faces to split are going to be that portion of the body. And the sketch is going to be that spline. And we're going to say OK. So at this point, I would typically transition over to surfaces. And what I would say is that I want to select and delete that face. It's going to turn this entire thing into a surface. And then I want to get rid of this. Now, one thing that happens is I can't really get rid of this piece here because we didn't split it up uh, just yet. So if we want to split that face up, what we should do before we delete this is we should try to use split face. We should try to split this face right here. And the splitting tool is going to be this face. Now, oftentimes, this will cause problems. We're going to allow it to extend, which should allow it to push up. And then it'll give us a division there. So now we can go back and delete that face. And we can select these and delete those as well, using delete on the keyboard or going to modify and delete. So once again, now we're dealing with surfaces. These are all open. I'm going to go to Create, Loft. I'm going to select these three edges for my first side or my profile. And then my second side, I'm going to select 
this right here. Let's go ahead and rotate this around. All right, so let's go ahead and pull this down. That first profile, we wanna make sure we have at least tangency, and the second one, we want tangency as well. So now if we take a look at this, that looks pretty good. That looks like the transition that we expected to see. You can see that it's pretty close. It's not perfect. It looks pretty good down here. If we wanna make some adjustments to it, what you can do is you can play around with the tangency weight. So for example, if I make this 1.5, that means that I've got more influence coming from the neck and that allows me to sort of push it down a bit farther. If I make it one, you can see that it comes up. And that's true for all of our profiles, as long as we're using an edge of a surface as our selection, because it's gonna take the surface as that tangency driver. Now, if we're using a sketch, then it's not gonna work. So everything looks pretty good there. I'm gonna say, okay. Uh, one thing that we should keep in mind, and actually we should go back into that loft that I didn't mention, is these options here for free edges. If we say aligned edges, you'll notice that it changes the way that that edge is being created. When we use free edges, there's a little bit of a wrinkle there. Aligned edges oftentimes will give us a better result. I'm gonna use aligned edges on both of those and say okay. And then that means that this is going to be a little bit cleaner. It does sometimes produce problems. It's kind of a case-by-case -case basis, but I'm going to go ahead and stitch all this together, say OK, and now we just have these openings to take care of. Now We're going to trim a lot of this away, but I'm going to try to use the patch tool and just let it patch that. And you'll notice that it's giving us an issue, and mainly because this section that we cut away, I just canceled that, the section that we cut away right here, that is higher than this. So in order to smooth this out, we need to figure out how to, to sort of blend those together. Now, a couple different ways that we can do this. One, we can try to go to create and ruled. This allows us to create a surface that is tangent or uh, at a specific direction. And the reason that we would use ruled is because this allows us to create a new surface. So I can start to pull this out. And if I pick a point, it's gonna measure that as a distance. And because of the way we split everything up, That'll give me a fairly good result. I can say, okay. And this gets me a new surface here, but then I need to figure out how to trim this. One other thing we can do is we can select that. We can go to ruled. And now instead of norm, uh, tangent, we can do normal. That'll allow us to pull this out and use it as a trim. Now there are some potential issues that happen with this because we're now breaking this clean edge up. This means that we are uh, potentially causing issues with that edge when we create another surface, but in this design, we're actually cutting it away, so I'm not too worried about it. So I can use that as a trim tool, then I can get rid of this, uh, this tiny section here. It does produce problems because we already knitted everything together. And if that's the case, you can always go to split face, faces to split, splitting tool. We don't need to extend it in this case. Um, unless it doesn't completely extend through. So sometimes that will be the case. Let's try it one more time. Split face, splitting tool, allow it to extend. And then if we hide that last body, you can see now we've got this division on it. it let's us select it and delete it. All right, so all that extra work just for that geometry. Uh, you can see it's not perfect on the other side. We still need to extend this. So let's select that edge go to ruled surface, make sure it's tangent. We're gonna select this point and we'll say okay. And we should be able to just delete that because it was extended from the other side and then we'll stitch everything together. So a lot of times when you have something like this that you're trying to kind of model or uh, recreate, Having it on hand is extremely valuable because you can actually see these little details and figure out how they're, you know, how they kind of go together. We don't have that luxury because we're only using pictures. So um, at this point, I'm gonna try to use patch. And because that edge is now in line with the surface, it should be nice and clean. I can repeat the process on the other side and then I can stitch these together. Now, as soon as I stitch these together, what's gonna happen is it's gonna turn this into a solid body. So we're back to a solid body again. 
Now we've got that bottom section that's nice and smooth. The next thing we need to do is we need to sort of make those, uh, those cuts. So these cuts here on the top side, those can be pretty tricky, again, because of how they blend into the rest of the housing. So um, it's going gonna, it's gonna to take a little bit of work. Let's go ahead and save this. And let's think about a couple different ways that we can do this. Uh, so a couple ways that we can do this is, one, we can do a loft, because loft allows us to go from a point. So we can go from this point over to this point, um, or, or actually wherever that detail ends up. So if we bring our guitar picture back, you can see over here, it goes right up to the neck and it actually blends away over here. Uh, so this one, again, depending on the geometry or the size, it, it can go pretty far out. This one over here is a bit narrower, but I, I'm not gonna spend a ton of time getting it perfect, but I just wanna give you a couple techniques that you can use. So one technique is to do the sweep and or the, the loft and one technique is to do a sweep. There's probably other ones, but these are probably the two common ones that you would go toward. So the first one, I'm gonna do an offset plane. I'm gonna select this and I'm just gonna sort of pull this over. And what I'm looking to do is get this in roughly the center of whatever that detail is going to be. So I'm gonna say, okay, I'm gonna create a sketch on this. Let's go ahead and rotate this over. And I'm gonna use the slice option. It's gonna not, create a section view, it'll just be temporary. We're gonna create a line, and then this line is gonna represent where that cut is gonna go through the body. So once we figure out where that is, then we're going to use the construct plane along path option. We'll select this, we'll put this all the way at the end, so zero or one, depending on which direction uh, of the selection, and we're gonna select this and create a new sketch. What we wanna do from here is we wanna create that V. So we can do this with a conic or we can do this with a spline. I'm gonna go ahead and do this with a spline, but I'll show you the conic as well. We'll say, okay. And what I wanna do is I wanna use horizontal vertical on this edge here, hit escape, and then just sort of play around with the shape. So this, maybe we need to bring it over. This one here maybe needs to come over a little bit. Uh, if we go to create, we have something called a conic curve. And a conic curve, when you think about this, this is essentially a plane slicing through a cylindrical cone. So the closer we are to one, the steeper the angle is, the closer we are to going up through the center of the cone. The closer we are to zero, we're essentially getting a straight line. Now this is a, a bit tricky to visualize. I don't really use those very often, but it is a good way to get that sort of uh, deeper V here. I'm gonna finish the sketch. And then from the surface menu, I'm gonna use sweep. We're gonna sweep our spline along the single path. And then we can kind of look where it hits the guitar and figure out if we need to make any adjustments. So you can kind of see that it's not perfect because we don't really have a great way to, to sort of get it right up to the neck of the guitar. So this is one method that we can use. I'm gonna hide that surface. Another method that we can use does involve this line, but what we're going to do is we're going to create a sketch. You can pick any plane you want because in this case, what we're going to do is include 3D geometry. So I'm gonna select include 3D geometry. I'm gonna take this point here and that point right there. And then what we're gonna do is create a loft. Now loft allows us to go from points as well as profiles. So it gives us a way to get directly up next to the neck here and go through that, uh, that little profile that we made. So this is a great way where we can really control the end of that geometry. So I'm gonna say, okay. And now that I have that, I can use split body because this is a solid body. Bodies to split. The splitting tool is gonna be my surface. We're gonna say, okay. And you'll notice that it didn't work. So let's try it one more time. I'm gonna to go to split body, solid body, my splitting tool. I'm gonna to turn off the extend option and see if it works without it. So when we turn off the extend, now we've got this little piece here. We can remove it. I can hide that surface. And you can see that we made that cut through the guitar. So that looks pretty good. It probably could go a little bit farther. We could play around with the point and maybe add some additional points. But I'd say overall, 
that shape looks pretty good. It carries up over here and that looks, looks like it um, gives us some pretty good geometry. So we're going to do the same thing on the other side. We're going to create an offset plane, put it in roughly the center location of whatever feature it is you're making. So in this case, looks like probably two and a quarter. It's going to be about right. And then again, we're going to create a sketch. I'm going to use the slice option. It just kind of helps me visually. And then again, I'm just going to create the, the line that's going to be essentially the cut that goes through here. And then once again, we're going to go and create a new sketch. Again, doesn't matter what plane we're doing for these sketches because we're just including 3D geometry. Now you don't actually need to turn on the 3D sketch option to do this. You only need to have 3D sketch turned on if you happen to be sketching in 3D, which we're not doing here. Now this one's a little bit tricky because we don't actually have a point far enough away. So when we look at this, you can see this is kind of up here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to include that edge. And then I'm going to place a point on it. Now because I'm going to place a point on it, now I'm going to want to turn on my 3D sketch option. I'm going to select point. And I'm just going to place a point there. Right click and say OK. That gives me that point out in space. I'm going to turn 3D sketch back off. And then we're going to go to loft. So once again, pick my point, my line, and the other point I want to go to. That's going to create that, uh, that nice little cut surface for me. Go to split body, bodies to split. This is my tool. Extend doesn't need to be turned on. You can see in this case it fails. And again, this is going to happen sometimes depending on where the surface is hit. If this point exactly hits this edge, it might be good for us to maybe trim it or make some adjustments. One thing that you can do that's kind of quick and easy is you can use the offset option. And you can take this and you can offset it a very small amount. Another thing that you can do is you can take this and you can use move copy. We want to reset our pivot point because we don't want the pivot point to be normal to that surface. We might want to make sure that it's aligned to something else. And then just go up a small amount, let's say 0 0.02. And sometimes just moving it a little bit away from other geometry will allow you to make that cut. So we're going to do split body. Bodies to split, splitting tool, let's try one more time, and you can see now it works. So really it was the end of the surface that was hitting this edge that was causing us problems. Didn't have a problem on the other side, but for some reason it did here. So now we can take that, we can right click and remove it. We don't want to delete it because uh, we actually need that geometry to still remain in the timeline, but we can just kind of use the remove option. So again, I could spend a lot more time trying to get this transition better. I could add more points or, or really work on that surface transition. We could loft from more than a point. We could loft from this edge if we wanted to and, and have it sort of transition around. But that gives you a general idea of how to make that. So I know that was probably not uh, the best walkthrough or the best tutorial, but I wanted to highlight a handful of tools that are, are kind of helpful and kind of needed to make geometry like this. So there's a couple tricky things with this guitar. One is this blend, again, because the neck and the body are all one piece. And the other is kind of making these cuts. Now, they seem simple. And honestly, if you're making this by hand, that's kind of a, a really simple geometry that you can do just by sanding. However, when we're talking about modeling and getting really close up to the neck of this, uh, that's where things get a little tricky. Now, I can't promise that this is a perfect representation of this guitar because, again, we just kind of made some judgment calls along the way, but this should get you a little bit closer to some of that tricky geometry. If you have any questions or you like to see stuff like this that is not car related or if you have any tricky models, things that are giving you problems and you maybe want an opinion on, on different ways that you can model that geometry, by all means, please let me know. You can send me an email, support at caducator.com. You can leave a comment on the video. And as always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.